Hey folks, Halls of Stone is usually one of the final dungeons you'll complete before hitting level 80 in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Even though the trash and boss encounters in this dungeon are relatively simple by modern standards, there's still many important mechanics that you need to know about. Since this guide will cover both difficulties, I'll be sure to mention whenever an ability is unique to the heroic version of the dungeon. Finally, while the footage shown here is from Retail World of Warcraft, all of the strategies in this guide are written with Wrath Classic in mind. With all of that being said, let's get into Halls of Stone. Right at the start of the dungeon, you'll encounter a patrol containing two Darkrune Warriors and one Darkrune Theurgist. The Theurgists will cast Forked Lightning, which is a frontal cone that tanks should face away from the group. Similarly, the Warriors will cleave off of the tank, so they should also be faced away. Upon clearing this pack, you'll then have to face one more Theurgist and two Unrelenting Constructs which block the way forward. These mobs are pretty nasty. For starters, they'll charge at random players, dealing moderate damage, and they'll also cast Unrelenting Strike on the tank, which deals a decent chunk of damage and stuns them for 2 seconds. Finally, when these mobs are low in health, they'll begin to cast Short Circuit, which causes them to explode for massive damage in a 10 yard range and die after the cast finishes. The moment they begin casting this ability, everyone in your group should run away, as this will pretty much one-shot anyone except a geared tank. The next room is a large ring that contains multiple patrols. You'll want to be clearing a path to the right, as that's where the next three bosses are located. In total, there are two Darkrune Giants and four Iron Dwarf patrols within this room, and whenever you pull one of them, you should drag it back into the first hallway to avoid pulling extra. The Darkrune Giants are pretty straightforward. They'll whack your tank fairly hard, and they'll periodically stomp, dealing AoE damage to nearby players and knocking them back. As for the Dwarf Patrols, they'll contain one Darkrune Warrior, one Darkrune Theurgist, and one Darkrune Elementalist. We've already discussed the first two, but the Elementalist is also really easy to deal with. He'll mostly just cast Lightning Bolt on the tank, and he'll summon a Storm Ellie with relatively low HP. It's worth noting that this mob has a 50% haste buff, which mages can spell steal to do big damage for two minutes. In order to get through this room, you'll likely need to kill at least one Giant and two Dwarf Patrols. After clearing out some space, you can head up the stairs to your right where you'll encounter one more pack of dwarves. It contains the exact same mobs as the patrols from before, so your strategy will remain the same. At this point, you've reached a crossroads, and there are three different paths that you can take, with each one leading to a different boss encounter. Technically speaking, there's no specific order that you need to complete these in, but I generally prefer to do Crystallis, then Maiden of Grief, and finally the Tribunal of Ages. For the purposes of this guide, that's the order I'll be explaining the bosses in. On the left side of the intersection, you'll spot a Raging Construct, and your tank should grab this mob and drag it back. These guys hit the tank fairly hard, and they have an instant cast Frontal Cone attack, so DPS should be really careful about where they're standing as the tank kites the mob back. On the right side of the intersection, you'll find three Crystalline Shardlings. These guys are non-elite, have low health, and don't use any special abilities, so they should die fairly easily. Once you've killed them, you'll want to head right through the hole in the wall and enter Crystallis' subzone. The first pack you'll encounter in this hallway contains one Darkrune Worker and two Darkrune Shapers. The Worker doesn't do much outside of hitting the tank, but the Shapers will cast Chiseling Ray at random players, dealing heavy shadow damage over 4 seconds. When this cast goes out, you should try to interrupt it as soon as possible. While moving on to the next pack of trash, you'll run into a large pack of Crystalline Shardlings, and there are many more of these located throughout the subzone. As stated previously, these mobs are really weak, so you should be able to just carve right through them. The next real pack will contain one Darkrune Worker, one Darkrune Shaper, and a Darkrune Scholar. The Scholar is the only new mob here, and it'll cast Static Arrest, which interrupts a player's spellcasting and deals moderate damage to them. This deals roughly the same damage as Chiseling Ray, so it's equally important that you interrupt it. As a nice little bonus, the Scholars will come with an Intellect buff that mages can spell steal. Following one more pack of Shardlings, you'll have to fight a Scholar, a Worker, and two Shapers. Nothing special here, just cleave them down and kick as many spells as you can. The final room in the subzone will contain a lot of Shardlings, and you'll also find a few Darkrune controllers patrolling around. These guys will buff the nearby Shardlings, but their really scary ability is Domination, which is basically a mind control on a random player. It should go without saying that if one of your party members is mind controlled, that's bad, so you should never let one of these casts go off. Although it is technically possible to sneak past some of this trash and pull Crystallis, I would personally recommend clearing out the entire area to provide your group with as much room as possible. Once all of the mobs are dead, you're ready to engage Crystallis. Crystallis has a few different mechanics. Stomp will deal AoE damage to anyone within 25 yards, Boulder Toss will deal damage to the tank, and only on heroic mode, Ground Spike will periodically hit a random player in your group for additional damage. 
outside of putting strain on your healer, none of these mechanics are really impactful. The only important part of Crystallis is his final ability combo, Ground Slam and Shatter. The slam will knock players back and slow them over the course of 5 seconds, after which point they'll be turned to stone and stunned. A few seconds later, Crystallis will cast Shatter, causing every player in the group to take damage depending on how close they are to another player. If everyone in your group is spread out, this mechanic will barely be noticeable, but if they're all stacked up, you'll instantly die. This summarizes the entire fight, just stay spread and the boss will die. Once Crystallis is dead, you can jump through the nearby hole in the floor, which will immediately take you back to the entrance of the side area. From here, you'll want to head right again and clear out the trash before Maiden of Grief. The first room will contain three more packs of Theurgists and Warriors. Make sure to pull them one at a time, drag them back, and then have the tank face the mobs away. The hallway up ahead will have one more Darkrune Giant, and then you'll have to fight two Lightning Constructs outside of Maiden's room. Despite their appearance, these Constructs are actually a new mob type. They have two abilities, the first of which is an Arcane Explosion, so ranged players should stand back. Their second ability is Chain Lightning, which does exactly what you would expect it to do, and should be interrupted. After you've killed all these mobs, you're good to pull Maiden of Grief. The Maiden has only two abilities that you really need to know about. The first is Storm of Grief, which causes a black puddle to appear on the ground and deal heavy ticking damage to anyone standing inside of it. The second ability is called Shock of Sorrow, and this will deal moderate shadow damage to all players and incapacitate them for 6 seconds. Since this ability is an in-cap and not a stun, the effect will break if you take damage, and this does include ticks from the Storm Grief puddles on the ground. When this cast is about to finish, your entire group should dip their pinky toe inside of the Storm of Grief in order to ensure that they take one tick of damage and break their in-cap. Once you're free, you should immediately move back out of the storm so that you don't take excessive ticking damage. Finally, I do want to mention that on Heroic, she has a unique ability which drains mana from a random player and deals damage to them equal to the mana drained. This ability is completely negligible, but I at least wanted to acknowledge the fact that it exists. Now that you've put the Maiden out of her misery, you can backtrack up the hallway and take a right at the intersection towards the third boss of the dungeon. The first hallway will contain one Darkrune Giant and multiple Raging Constructs. Unless you're feeling really ballsy, you should probably pull these one at a time, and as a reminder, they have a frontal cone. The clearing up ahead will contain a mix of Raging Constructs and Unrelenting Constructs. As a reminder, the Unrelenting Constructs are the ones which charge random players, stun the tank, and self-destruct before they die. On the left side of this room, you'll also encounter Bran Bronzebeard, and talking to him will start an RP event which leads into the third boss encounter. You could activate him right now, but generally I would recommend clearing out the next room of trash before you do. This room will contain three different lightning constructs, which are the ones that cast Arcane Explosion and Chain Lightning. What's interesting about these particular mobs is that they'll patrol around the room and periodically receive a buff called Overload from the giant orb in the center. This buff will increase their damage dealt by 200%, so I would highly recommend waiting to pull one of these until the buff is expired. Once you've cleared out this room, you can talk to Bran and start the event. This will cause him to run ahead into the room with the lightning constructs, which is why I recommended clearing them out ahead of time. We'll continue on into the final room, and you'll have to talk to him one more time to begin the third boss encounter, Tribunal of Ages. Real talk, this boss is hot ass. It takes five whole minutes to complete it, and there is no way to speed up this process. During these five minutes, waves of Darkrune Dwarves will charge down the hallway, and the nearby Titan version of Mount Rushmore will bombard you with various abilities. The first head will just constantly deal damage to random players throughout the entire fight, and a few minutes later, the second head will begin lobbing purple balls at your party. If these purple balls collide with the ground, they'll explode, dealing damage to all nearby players and leaving behind a nasty debuff. On normal, this debuff will increase your damage taken by 50%, but on heroic, this debuff is increased to 100%. Obviously, you should try to avoid these purple balls, but if someone in your group does get hit, make sure to dispel them ASAP. Within the last few minutes of the fight, the final head will activate and start shooting out fire lasers at a random player. This ability is active 100% of the time, and will just slowly move around the room and chase after a random player. If you see it following you, just move away. As for the adds, they are nothing to write home about. The protectors and warriors both have a frontal cleave, and the protectors will charge random players. Tank should obviously try to face these guys away, and the stormcallers will just cast lightning bolt and shadow or pain, so they're not super impactful. The final mob, Iron Golem Custodian, will begin spawning towards the end of the encounter. He'll cast Sunder Armor on the tank and periodically use Ground Smash, which deals AoE damage and stuns any player's hit for 2 seconds. Honestly, during this boss, as long as you're even half paying attention, you should be fine. It's just really long and really boring. Once the encounter is finished, you should talk to Bran in order to skip the remaining RP. 
This will cause Bran to appear in front of the final boss room, which is located all the way back at the start of the dungeon. It's located on the other side of that initial ring with the Darkrune Giants and the patrols of Theurgists and Warriors. You should have already cleared most of these guys out, so at most you'll only need to pull one extra pack before you talk to Bran and start the final boss fight against Sijanir the Iron Shaper. This fight is extremely simple provided you understand the mechanics. Throughout the fight, you'll have to deal with Sijanir himself and two ad generators located on opposite sides of the room. When the fight begins, these generators will pump out Iron Dwarves, and a little while into the fight, they'll begin instead churning out Trogs. Both of these adds will just cast lightning attacks on their current target, and they aren't really dangerous on their own, but because they're constantly spawning, you will need to clear them out in order to make sure you're not overrun. Towards the end of the fight, the trogs will be replaced with malformed oozes, and although they don't actually use any abilities, they'll attempt to merge with the other oozes into an even larger ooze. This thing could be a bit problematic if it's allowed to spawn, so once again, just kill off all the oozes before they become an issue. Finally, when Sijanir reaches 20% health, Bran will cause the forges to summon allied dwarves, and these guys will actually help you finish off the boss. Generally, I would say the best way to handle this fight is to have a single DPS on each generator who is told to completely ignore Sijanir and only focus on killing the adds. This will, first of all, ensure that the adds are always being dealt with, and if one of the DPS falls behind, the third player can just swap off the boss and help them out. But this strategy is even more useful after you understand the abilities cast by Sijanir himself. He'll shoot Chain Lightning onto the tank, causing anyone nearby to take damage from the bounce, and he'll throw out Static Charge, which causes the tank to pulse damage onto nearby players. When this debuff is applied, it should be dispelled as soon as possible. Sijanir also has a large AoE pulse called Lightning Ring, and with each tick of damage that a player receives, they'll get a debuff causing them to take 10% increased nature damage. Finally, Sijanir will apply Lightning Shield to himself, and you'll want to purge or spell steal this if possible. While none of these abilities are extremely problematic, the end result is that Sijanir is just already incredibly unfriendly to melee DPS. This means that even if they're just tunneling Sijanir, they won't be able to maintain their full rotation, and therefore it's just a better idea to assign them to an ad generator. Trust me, if you do this and have your tank healer and DPS worry about the boss, he'll be very, very easy. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know in order to clear normal or heroic Halls of Stone in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. If you want to learn more about the other dungeons present in Wrath Classic, I'd recommend checking out my Dungeon Guide playlist, which you can find linked in the description below.